Well, guys, I done goofed up. About a month ago, I spent 100 days destroying Subnautica, but as I tried to leave, I collided with some debris, which resulted in me crash landing here on Earth. I've contacted some people to pick me up, but it's gonna take them about 100 days to arrive, so we're gonna need to survive on our own until then, which won't be easy whatsoever. Anyways, let's get right into the raft sailing shenanigans. I started out by learning the basics of the game, which consisted of gathering materials, expanding the raft, and why you should stay out of the ocean. No. <laughs> However, the biggest challenge I face is securing a steady source of food and water. I learned I was able to get vegetables from barrels, but there were two issues with this. One, they don't fill you with many calories, and two, I fucking hate vegetables. Things were getting pretty bad, I was getting pretty desperate, so I was left with no other option but to find a way to kill myself. Oh hey, an island. I grabbed some pineapples and watermelons, then went back to the raft to eat them, where I realized that the raft has unfortunately gotten stuck. We won't be able to progress if we stay on the island, so using the materials I had, I made us a paddle. Using this, we can now move the raft in any direction, but we have to use it sparingly since it has the durability of a Pringles chip. Aww. As I gathered more materials, I started making some water purifiers and food plots so that I wouldn't have to rely on islands for nutrition. Then later on that night, I picked up a barrel that gave me a blueprint. Wow, receiver? I barely even know her. <laughs> the next day, I focused on building a sail, which allowed me to control the direction of the raft's path without using a paddle. Then I added some storage, a research table, some nets, and most importantly, a rug. Good rug. Things were looking much better. I was far from living comfortably, but my chances of survival have increased tremendously. But to increase our chances even more, we need to keep expanding our raft, which means we're going to need a lot of wood. While I was on one of the islands, I got attacked by a giant bird and a wild boar. I was able to handle myself against the boar quite well, until my spear broke. Having no other options, I ran towards higher ground to think of a new plan. This is where I learned that dying results in losing two thirds of your inventory. A devastating setback. Wow, I like lost everything. Is this what divorce feels like? Cutting my losses short, I left the island and focused on the important tasks like chopping wood, building wood, and poking the shark with some wood. <gasps> with the shark dead, I took some time to relax and catch up on some errands. But shortly after, the shark came back. Oh my God, they come back that fast? Bro really think he the Terminator. Now that we have more space on the raft, I wanted to make a room for myself. Having a space where I can relax is very important for my sanity. I might not have much of it left, but I am one bad day away from painting a face on a volleyball and filling it with more DNA than a child on Epstein Island. So I began placing the basics, like storage and a bed. But I noticed the foundation, walls, and roof made the room look like a worn down crack house. So I upgraded the quality of the wood. On day 13, I came across an island that had a plane wreck on it, but instead of Finding Amelia Earhart's remains, I found a cool hat and a bunch of resources, which I used to make decorations for my room. At this point, I had very little concern over my survival, so I was able to start indulging in my favorite hobby, robbing people. Now this might seem like a difficult challenge since these waters look emptier than a plate of African cuisine, but we should be able to find people by building a receiver. But little did I know how difficult it is to set up. After using most of my resources to build it, I set it up behind the raft and realized it needs a battery and an antenna to work. So I went island hopping, crafted the items, and hooked them up to the receiver where I learned it needs to be set up at a higher altitude. So I went island hopping again, built a platform much higher in the sky, and set the receiver up where I realized that I needed two more fucking antennas. <sighs> Island hopping, item crafting, installation, and now we need another battery because I left the receiver on all night. After tossing the battery into the ocean to charge electric eels, I realized that I didn't have enough materials to craft another battery. So, you know the drill. Island, craft, install, and finally got the receiver to work, which guided me to a radio tower. It seemed like no one was home, the perfect conditions for a low threat robbery. So I ran around taking everything, which consisted of old plastic containers and metal scraps. Yeah, it, it seemed like the good loot was already gone. But I continued snooping around where I found a headlamp blueprint and some notes. But right before I could reach the very top of the radio tower, I made a critical mistake. I forgot to eat. 
When you get hungry in Raft, you slow down to the speed of Stephen Hawking's wheelchair on low battery. And because of that, I couldn't make the last jump. So I had to drop all the way to the bottom, snack on some fruits, and make my way back up the tower again. And boy am I glad we came back. Cause here I found a dishwasher, more blueprints, and a sticky note with the receiver code and the word people on it. And where there's people, there's loot to be stolen. So I began sailing toward the next marker on the map, arriving two days later. Ooh, a yacht? Oh, you know there's some good loot in here. I swam around to the back and stepped inside, where I was greeted with absolute darkness. I could go back to the raft and make a headlamp, but respectfully, Mama didn't raise no bitch. I returned with a headlamp, where I discovered a bunch of mediocre loot and an infestation of giant rats. But my looting soon came to a halt when I found the ship's bridge requires one bomb? Using what I've learned from Breaking Bad in the American school system, I grabbed some items from around the ship and turned them into a bomb. <laughs> Here I found more blueprints, mediocre loot, but no people, only another signal receiver code. At this point, I was confused. Where were the people? Why are these rats so big? Why haven't you subscribed to the channel yet? Don't you know I give all my subscribers free head? And after reading all the various notes I've collected so far, I managed to piece everything together. This is Olaf, the owner of the yacht. He adopted a bunch of mutant rats and trained them to obey his commands. Many people didn't like this for one reason. They were eating all the food. However, Olaf had the perfect solution. Killing off the entire crew. But before that could happen, the boat crashed into these rocks. This is when Olaf took the lifeboats and left everyone here for dead, most likely taking the good loot with him. Which means if we want to hit a big score, we're going to have to hunt this man down. But not before we use these blueprints to upgrade our raft. You see, we now have the ability to craft an engine and steering wheel, which will help us control the ship better and move around much faster. So I installed the steering wheel on the second floor and installed the engine right under it. And using the leftover one I had, I fueled up the engine then powered it on where I encountered another problem. Yeah, this does not look like it's working. After doing some research, I learned that the engines can only handle so much weight before they start doing this. And the only way to remove weight is to destroy some of the raft foundations. But I'm too lazy for that, so I just built a second engine. And with that done, I set course for the next island. We arrived at our destination on day 47, which turned out to be a tall cliffside with a thick forest. Non-park personnel must turn back. Yeah, I'm gonna go fuck around and find out. Is that a bear? Oh, hey, 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 bro, chill, bro, chill. I continued following the path towards one of the relay stations and encountered, of all things, a pool of radiation. Using the floating boxes, I parkoured my way to the other side. <laughs> this is where I finally made it to one of the relay stations. I turned on the power and saw that I needed to activate two more. Simple enough, right? No, no, it wasn't. As I started making my way to the next relay station, I found an area filled with poisoned blueberries. And as I was collecting them, I thought of a devious plan. Distract the big black bear with blueberries and take everything from its cave. However, I made one critical mistake. I got lost. And upon trying to find my way back, more mistakes were made. Oh my god, I'm being jumped. Oh my god, I'm defenseless that I'm being jumped. Now, I've been in many situations like this before. And in all of them, there's only been one clear and effective solution running away like a little bitch. And lucky for me, I managed to get back to the ship, restock on equipment, and found my way back to the Black Bear Cave. I placed the berries in a box, and the bear came running straight to it, allowing me to grab everything in the cave and discovering a new tool. I'm gonna be real with you guys, this machete looks cheap as fuck. <laughs> as I got close to the second relay station, I encountered a lifted drawbridge, but the lever to lower it was on the other side. Using my critical thinking skills, I did what any American would have done, and shot the lever. Huh, that actually worked. I turned on this relay station and made my way to the last tower. I had to navigate through the darkness and thick vines, but I managed to reach the tower and found something unexpected. Buddy. Hey, you got any loot? Yeah. No? Yeah. Bumass bitch. I activated the relay station and I was gifted with a new receiver code. I wasn't able to find any signs of Olaf, so I was hoping I could find a clue at this next location. Instead, I found a trailer park trash pit. I just want to say that this place looks like an OSHA employee's worst nightmare. But despite its appearance, there were juicy scraps littered throughout the area. So I took the time to take every single package I could see, where I soon came across a package at the bottom of this well. I saw that it was attached to some sort of floaty and realized that the only way to get it was by filling the well with liquid. Since I'm not leaving any crumb of loot, there was clearly only one solution. Inside the package was one of three parts for a zipline hook. I had a strong feeling that the other parts were somewhere on this island, but I couldn't find it anywhere on the surface. So I built some makeshift scuba gear and checked underwater. 
which turned out to be much more dangerous than I anticipated. Did I kill you? Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Once again, I lost two thirds of my inventory. So I crafted more equipment, dove underwater, killed the remaining puffer fish, and harvested them, which gave me explosive goo, which will be important later. After getting close to the very bottom of the ocean, I found a container that had the zipline part and the blueprints for a metal detector, also important later on. Back at the ship, I depoted my resources and smelted the explosive goo into explosive powder. You see, the surface had some sort of test rocket that needed explosive powder to lift off, and knowing that I only need one more part to craft the zipline, I suspected that this might be the way to get it. So I loaded it up with powder and launched it into the sky, naming this voyage Operation Kobe Bryant. At the side of the wreckage, I found not only the last zipline part, but also Major Tom, who I gave a very nice spot in my room. After building the zipline handle, I was able to access new areas on the island, where I found more notes and a blueprint for the engine controls. The second I saw this, I made my way back to the ship to try and make it. But as always, there was a bit of a roadblock. This is titanium, a very strong metal that can only be found inside buried loot caches. And it is also a key component of the engine controls. And since this would be really helpful to have on our raft, I decided to build a metal detector and look for underground loot boxes. However, something quite detector. unexpected happened. Huh? That's right, I found the tiki. Ooh, ah, ooh. Tiki, tiki. As I continued to search for titanium, I passed the time by reading more of the notes I collected so far, where I learned that Olaf visited the trailer park trash pit before me. And to make things even more interesting, not only does he have large rats, but he now has one large hyena as well that he plans on using to raid a city called Tangaroa. Wait, wait, they're raiding cities without me? I wasted no time and set course for Tangaroa, but I could have never expected what I was about to lay my eyes on. Disney's Epcot. I swam around the dome and managed to find an entrance. And inside, I was greeted by familiar faces. Oh my god, it's the goddamn rats again. Wait a minute, this means Olaf is here, right? Right now, I was exploring the tunnel system built under the city. The good loot was most likely going to be found on the surface. So I tried to look for a way to access it. And after solving a couple of puzzles, I found this hatch that should lead directly to... Oh, I fucked up. The flooding proved to be very useful though, since it allowed me access to a whole nother level of the basement. However, this is where I encountered my most notorious op. Parkour. But that's okay, because I learned from the bear island it should... After being tased a couple times like a gay man in the 1940s, I taped up some of the frayed wires and got access to the city. Oh, look at this little guy. Uh, oh, he's strapped. Oh, he's fucking strapped. After forcefully factory resetting the bot, I snagged the key card from its head, giving me access to the apartment buildings. Despite them being very empty, I did manage to find some scraps left behind from the raid. And by following the scrap trail, I found a keypad. After checking my notes, I speculated that the code for the keypad was probably the solution to this puzzle. So I went around memorizing all the numbers on these buildings and put the code in. Why is that a thing? What is the purpose of this? I swam towards the launch disc and found a ladder to get inside of it, where I found some pretty good loot, some blueprints, more notes, and another dishwasher, but absolutely no signs of Olaf or his wealth. However, as always, I did find another code for the receiver. But before we leave the area, we need more wood for the engines. And this biodome happens to have a pretty huge supply of trees. So I decided to just take what I need. So I may have gotten a little carried away. With my new surplus of wood and palm leaves, I decided to get a bit creative and make a kitchen. But in the middle of construction, I found myself drifting towards the Twin Towers, which gave me the opportunity to do something really, really funny. Mr. President, there's been a second boat! On top of one of the towers was a crane, but I couldn't access the controls without a key, which happened to be lost deep underwater. It's time to subnautica this shit, boys. I had to move around jellyfish, survive anglerfish attacks, fix broken strobe lights, avoid a bunch of booby traps littered around the inside, but it was all worth it when I got to the end and found a loot. Oh, loot, glorious loot. Huh? In front of me was a hostile rhino shark, and it was the last thing stopping me from getting the crane control key. The only problem is that I can't damage it with melee attacks, so I had to find some other way to defeat it. Oh, I am not prepared for this whatsoever. Oh my god, he's coming, he's coming. Juked? Hold on, can I run into the pillar? Huh. Wait, explosive barrels? Oh, I can pick these up. Uh, oh, oh, I can put it in here. 
Oh, I see. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. After doing that two more times, the rhino shark was killed and I harvested his remains. And just a little further, I was able to get my hands on the crane key, allowing me to indulge in my childhood fantasy of operating one of these large pieces of equipment. At the bottom of the hole, I found another receiver code and a blueprint, but still no sign of Olaf or his stash of loot. At this point, I was starting to lose hope. Catching Olaf was slowly becoming more trouble than it was worth. Nothing was really stopping me from giving up on finding him and waiting the rest of my days for help to arrive. But I also wanted to see this through. So I began sailing towards the next destination. So there's a bunch of icebergs around me and I need to make sure that I don't crash into any of them because I don't think YouTube could handle me making another joke about a human tragedy. I started making my way to the rainbow lights in the sky and it led me to a nuclear facility. However, the door mechanism froze over and the only way to melt the ice is to pour some sort of warm liquid on it. However, this was only half the problem. To open the facility, I need to find a key somewhere around the iceberg. Oh, it's a snowmobile. Oh my god, I can actually ride this. My name is Mono Aurelio, and uh, this is my audition for Fast and Furious Antarctica Drift. Oh, this looks interesting. I will not use you to okay, come on, game. I'm not that fat. After navigating the ice tunnels, I found my way into the tower and found another puzzle. Now, in order to complete the puzzle, we need to find all the constellations in the sky, count the amount of stars on them, reorganize them into the right code, put the code into the safe... Oh, hey, a key. I opened up the power plant, but learned that the facility had some radiation leaks. And to explore further, we would need to patch them up using three control rods, which I managed to get after completing three sets of puzzles scattered around the facility. And after installing all the control rods, I flipped the switch to fix the reactor, and of course, of course, of course it wouldn't be that easy, because why would it be that fucking easy? Manually inserting them isn't hard whatsoever. All we have to do is turn a valve for each of the three rods. However, this becomes much more difficult when you're being assaulted by giant beetles. But the worst was yet to come. Oh, that's a fucking problem. Once again, I was defenseless. However, this was no time to use the secret technique of running away. I decided to risk it all and turn the valves anyways. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, is that it? Oh, let's go! Clearing out the radiation gave me access to a new room where I found a calculator, blueprints, and believe it or not, another receiver code. But instead of throwing my PC out of the window from pure frustration, I read some of the notes from this island and found something interesting. The receiver code for Utopia, the next place Olaf intends to raid. This was my opportunity to catch up with them and finally rob that red beret bastard for everything he's got. So I fueled up the engines, set course for the island, and arrived a couple days later. Yo, I can like stack boxes on top of each other like Minecraft. Oh, oh, oh! After a little bit of snooping around, I found a locked hut with people inside of it. I couldn't believe it. Olaf hit the most devious lick of them all, stealing people's freedom. I had enough. It was time to confront Olaf, but that would prove to be a very difficult challenge. To get to him, we first need two keys. One was in front of the locked hut, but the other is in this tower that I can only reach using this harpoon gun. That's conveniently missing a harpoon in a CO2 canister. After some research, I learned that I can get the canister from this hut, but we need to fill it with liquid first. After finding the harpoon in a nearby hut, I activated the harpoon gun, ziplined to the tower, grabbed the second key, and unlocked the door. I was prepared for anything, or at least I thought so, because to my dismay, I encountered more parkour. Okay, this doesn't seem too hard. Wow, I am actually really bad at this video game. After several, several attempts of trying to get to the other side, I found another elevator that's missing a cog, and the cog is conveniently placed back on the other side. Uh. So I grabbed the cog, brought it to this pulley, spent even more time doing parkour, and fixed the elevator, where I finally saw the smug bastard himself. Olaf, my G, I just wanna talk, buddy. I just wanna talk. Are, are, are those Molotovs? While avoiding his bombardment of fire, I continued to chase him down into a corner where he pulled out his trump card, an acid slinging hyena. Oh, get fucked, buddy! With his hyena dead, I captured Olaf and stole the key to the hut, where I finally released the people of Utopia. Thank you! Titan has freed us! Oh, I wouldn't say free. More like under new management. Oh! 
and after taking as much of their shit as I could, I left the island and mounted the head of the hyena in my room. I began taking a good look at all the wonderful memories we made and all the hardships we've accomplished. Then soon after, I went to bed, waiting for help to arrive in the morning. <sighs> uh huh? What the fu-